Hi guys, quick announcement. I'm having a masterclass on this Friday, December 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. This class is all about healthy belting and mixing. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I would love to see you there. Click the link in the description to sign up. Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, how are you? It's so nice to meet you. I'm Hannah. I'm a voice teacher and here on this channel today, we're gonna talk about Taylor Swift's vocal evolution. So I'm gonna start off by giving you my history with Taylor Swift. I have never considered myself a Swifty. I've always admired her as an artist and I loved her music, but I was never a huge fan and I didn't know the lore and Swifties know the lore. So I was like, no, 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 I'm not gonna identify as a Swifty, especially not publicly, because <laughs> people will expect me to know things and I just don't. However, I saw the Eras movie and it was a spiritual experience. I genuinely, I was converted. I became a born again Swifty in that moment. It was incredible. So I have been having a lot of fun in my process of becoming a Swifty. I've been learning a lot about her and I have been listening to more of her music. And I thought, what a better way to celebrate my newfound Swifty dumb, swift dumb, my new identity, than to talk about her vocal evolution. If we know one thing about Taylor, it is that she is versatile. She is constantly reinventing herself as she grows, and it's reflected in her music, which is so freaking cool. And I haven't even listened to all of her albums yet. It's honestly kind of fun. I get to experience it for the first time. If you guys want me to react to any specific Taylor Swift songs or albums, let me know in the comments. I'm still so new to this. But I found a couple compilation videos, thanks to the Swifties on YouTube, of Taylor's vocal evolution over the years. So we're going to go through it and we're going to talk about it. And the other question that I want to answer in this video is I've heard people say Taylor Swift isn't a phenomenal singer. She's okay, but she's not that great. Or they say she's a terrible live performer. So we're going to answer that question. Do we think that Taylor Swift is a terrible live performer? I will also include the links that these incredible Swifties, the videos that they made, so you guys can support them. The Look at her! Okay, so she's like 12 or 13. First of all, is her natural hair color that blonde or did it get darker as she got older? Because I know that happens. My hair has gotten darker as I've gotten older. This is a side note. I'm not a natural blonde or anything, but it has gotten darker as I've gotten older. Anyway, whatever. You can tell that she has got some pipes. Definitely, you can hear this in so many female pop stars singing from when they were like a kid, preteen. They're trying to sound like an adult and you can kind of hear that from her, but you can hear a lot of potential, like so much, so good. Okay, so this is 2005. So she was... 16, right? Look at her. So you can definitely hear some rasp going on in her voice, and I don't think it's intentional. I have no idea if at this point, I mean, she was 16. I don't know if she was maybe sick that day and it wasn't her best performance. I'm just gonna assume that she wasn't sick and this was her voice because that's all the information that I have. Her voice is developing. What we forget a lot is that it's not only male voices that go through puberty. Female voices do that as well. It's just not usually as obvious. And our voices are starting to get a little lower. And then as we're growing, our vocal cords are also growing. So vocal cords are getting longer and getting a little bit bigger. That can lead to some vocal issues or concerns like some rasp that's coming through. Or I've had a lot of like teenage students that really struggle with like getting fatigued really quickly and their voice, there can be a period of sometimes like months where they're like, my voice is not feeling very good. I can't sing for very long. That is not necessarily something to be alarmed of like depending on where you are in your age and your development etc that can be super super normal so that's what i'm hearing here she still sounds amazing but that's my psa to all my teenagers who are watching this yes our song this is such a good song wow 
Wow. Okay. So that was 2006 to 2007. So she was 16 or 17, 18, possibly. Again, still in a place where her voice is developing and she's doing really, really well. Again, I'll say that there are so many factors going on here in that first one. I'm hearing a lot more strain, a lot of compression happening in her vocal cords. They're just coming together like with a lot of strength. Her neck is kind of compressing in on her vocal folds. Now, that could be because she was 16, 17 and nervous and performing live and maybe she didn't have a ton of experience performing live. There's a lot of factors. It's hard to judge like what's going on in her voice. But what's cool about this video, so thank you to Taylor's version (laughs) is just the name of the channel. Thanks for putting this together. This is so fun. You can hear as she's getting older, her voice is developing and she's coming more into her own. And even though this is, you know, her country era, I don't feel like she's singing in that much of a country style. It seems pretty authentic to her. She sounds really good here. And you can tell also, I'll say that it's good sound design. She doesn't have to sing so loudly. And that's actually one of my like things that drives me crazy. In some of these live performances that people are critiquing so much, the singer is singing so loud. And that could completely be like their preference and the sound design, right? But it drives me crazy when that isn't balanced. The mics need to be able to pick up a much like lower volume than you think of. and. It needs to be so precise because when we're singing, we get fatigued real fast. It's a part of our body, okay? And especially you're performing live, maybe even like her whole concert, right? Which we'll talk about soon, the era's (laughs) concert, because I have thoughts. Even in that, what you can tell, well, maybe not everybody. I can tell because I'm a nerd. I can tell that she's singing in a very comfortable volume and range for her voice. And there are other times where you hear a singer sing live where it's like, you are at the top of your volume. You cannot sing any louder. And if you brought the volume down and the mic came up, we would feel so much more comfortable. Look at her. So right there, I would say that I've heard her sound better, even in this compilation, and she sounds nervous. If you guys are singers out there, you know how emotion that we have in our body, especially nervousness, affects our voice. Suddenly our voice is shaking. It can be really frustrating. Like if you know that you can do better, but you go to an audition, you get nervous, and then your voice cracks and shakes, that's very frustrating. So we're gonna give her lots of grace. I don't think she sounds bad in that clip. She just sounds fine. <laughs> she just sounds fine, but she sounds nervous. It's your freshman year and you're gonna be here for the next four years in this town. My God, she really blew up at a young age, didn't she? This is nuts. You should have said no, you should have gone home, you should have thought twice, will you let it all go? You should have known it works, but what you did with her, get back to me. So first of all, the rain, it looks amazing. That has gotta be really distracting as a singer to be just drenched in rain. What I'm hearing is interesting. It's like, you can hear that she's getting like a little bit, the tension, there's a little bit extra tension. That could be from a million different things. Could be from stress, could be from dehydration, could be from her vocal development, et cetera. But the compression is happening, which can sometimes give this sound of if, I'm really squeezy here. Sometimes it can give us the tiniest bit of nasality. Not to say that I would ever describe her sound in this clip as like nasally, but I have heard some people say that about Taylor Swift, which I think is very inaccurate. But if you are hearing any tiny aspects of that, that's probably where it's coming from, is this squeeze. And then those muscles in our neck, those external muscles as they compress, it's helping us get up 
to the high notes. This is why I really like doing these vocal analysis videos because I hope that it helps us understand a little bit better what we're hearing and what we're also feeling. And we can look at it more objectively because our voices are so valuable to us. They are a part of our body. They are a part of us. It's very vulnerable, especially when you're thinking about you as a singer. We beat ourselves up so bad when we should really be looking at it like, okay, maybe I have some of these like bad habits, but they're helping me in some way. There's probably a better way that will feel more comfortable and give me more stability, but it's not bad singing. I don't love that word. It's not bad singing. There's just a better way. Okay, let's talk about that. It's too late. I think she's backing off on the volume on purpose for style, but that's also right in her first passage. So that's where our chest voice and our head voice come together and we need to mix and blend through that, right? So that we don't have two separate voices. Ah, big crack in the middle, right? We want to blend that together. And so that is a particularly difficult note because of where it is. And so you can hear her lighten up there, but often volume and singing louder can be a coping skill when we are trying to like belt or sing stronger. And so we back off on the volume maybe for the style and then suddenly I lose my kind of footing on that note and then it sounds distinctly different than I wanted it to. Right here. That's pretty. And then we get this big, like huge volume coming at us. Side note, sorry, her hair looks so good. <laughs> I really like this color of like golden blonde hair on her. She looks beautiful. Okay, anyway. And remember, this girl is 20 or 21, okay? Her voice has not finished developing. And she's a freaking pop star, okay? Everything I'm saying here, we're not judging. We're noticing, we're being objective. This is not judgment, okay? We're analyzing. So what I do know difference between like Taylor's sound now and then is she was giving a lot of breath when she was in her chest voice. So like you can hear it when she says man. And I think that was intentional. That was a big style in the early 2010s. I don't think that necessarily shows bad habits in her voice, but as we get older and our voice actually lowers a little bit, her chest voice has really, really developed in a beautiful way. One of the things that I was just in awe of at the Eras movie was how freaking low she was singing. And I know that the haters are gonna say, well, obviously she like was auto tuned a little bit. She had some effects on her mic. Blah, 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 blah. I do this for a living, so I'm not an idiot. Ooh. Sorry, that was aggressive. But yes, of course, when you are performing live, you are going to have some of that help. That's normal. That doesn't mean that you can't sing. But it was very clear that she was singing live and to sing those low notes with such power and like, oh my God, like oomph. If there was just so much richness to those notes. And while I was in the theater, I was like, uh, like trying to match her pitch, like, oh my God, that is so low. Knowing that about her now, seeing this, she wasn't able to sing those low notes with as much power as she has now because of where she was at with her chest voice. Number one, her voice was still developing and it was the style to be a little bit breathy, have some like a little rasp, right? That was, that was just big then. Oh my God, I have never seen a more 2012 outfit. Look at her fedora. <laughs> she looks so cute. How long has that guy been playing in her band? He was in the Eras movie, I saw him. Has he been like with her since the beginning? I freaking love that. Again, she sounds nervous. That's what I'm hearing. If that is what makes people say she's not a good live performer, okay, fair. I don't think she's a bad live performer because she has a couple performances where she sounds nervous. I just hate when people hear that and then they're like, oh, she can't sing. Are you kidding me? Stop, get out. Oh my God, look at her silver dress. Oh 
Oh my god. She sounded so good and looked so good. Oh my god. Okay, loved that. Moving on. She sounds in this clip like she is not feeling her best and she's really gearing up for that high note. That's what I'm seeing. She's really like <gasps> taking these big breaths like she's she's ready to like give it a lot of power. So I was a little nervous. I was like, oh, how is she going to do on the high note? And she did really well. So that's kind of what it sounds like to me is that she was just maybe overcompensating a little bit because she maybe wasn't feeling great that day. Oh my god, look at her. She looks so good. Okay, 2014. How old was she? 24, 25. She is giving too much in this clip. This is a good, better, best situation. It sounds really good. And she also looks amazing. So like, who am I to say anything? If I was to give her a note, if I was to say, hey, let me make your life a little bit easier, I would say bring the volume back and watch out for shallow breaths. I am definitely not one of those teachers that spends a lot of time talking about breathing. That's maybe my like controversial method. I don't know. I think most singing teachers focus way too much on breathing, okay? But when we are dealing with like shallow breaths where our shoulders come up, <sighs> Or I take this breath and you can actually hear like a slight gasp. Things are happening to my voice there. And I want to make sure that when I breathe, I'm well supported, but I'm not affecting my voice. Does that make sense? If I breathe, my larynx is raised before I've even sung my first note. I want to make sure that I'm breathing here where I can feel kind of my ribs expand a little bit this way, side to side there and then I have a lot of support. So that's what I would say to her here is really watch out for the shoulders coming forward or them coming up when you breathe as well as like bring the volume down a little bit. There are lots of ways to add power and dimension and sparkly goodness to your voice that isn't just kind of big breath as much power as you can give me. Ooh. She sounds so good. Remember when you hit the brakes too soon? 20 stitches in a hospital room. When you started crying, baby, I did. Okay, this is a really, really good example of where I want less volume. <clears throat> excuse me, when I say less volume, it isn't because like, oh my gosh, you're like blowing my ears out. You're way too loud. It's a note for you as singers, right? I want you to back off on the volume because volume equals weight. So when we are louder, our vocal cords are thicker. And when they get really thick, they are harder to control. This is where I would say ease up on the volume. Not because right now she's so, so, so loud, but because if we're gonna get up to some high notes in a second, I I want us to be in a more balanced place to do that successfully. Okay, so we got the big note. I don't think that note was as strong as she wanted it to be. And I would love for that note to be stronger. And that can come also just from having more contrast, right? We bring the volume down in the bottom. That's going to give us more stability. But it's also just going to make that high note sound even more impressive because there's contrast between maybe a softer, more laid back sound on the bottom to the, you know, bigger note. I do think her vowel is okay, but I think her mouth is too wide. So singing more like May with her mouth being more like vertical up and down would give her again more sparkly goodness up on the top. Ooh, that low note in this video, 2017, this is the first time, of course, in this compilation that I'm hearing those really, really rich low notes. Here they come. They're starting. Look at what she's wearing. Oh my God. Mistakes, 
So that is another example where I think she's just pushing too much. Again, Swifties, please, please. I'm one of you. I swear this is a good, better, best situation. She sounds great. I am always, because I'm a huge vocal nerd and this is what I do, I'm always thinking about how can I make my singers' lives easier, especially if you are a singer like our queen Taylor Swift that is performing constantly. She is a vocal athlete. When I'm seeing this, I'm not just seeing this like one moment. I'm also thinking about, oh, this is a show out of probably many shows. Who knows what she's been up to like in the week before this moment. So her voice is probably tired. I mean, if you're performing that much, how could your voice not be tired? And so this part is just another example where I would say, let's back off on the volume a little bit, add some more contrast and turn your mic up. This is really interesting. So she's back to like, you know, some of her country roots. Her mouth is very square. You can see in some of these vowels. Watch what her mouth is doing. So bye, you can see almost all of her teeth. It's like she has this big smile. So this was in 2018, right? So she was almost 30. It's definitely a choice. When we're singing in country style anyway, yeah, your vowels are gonna be different. But the difference here is the shape of your mouth. Just because we're shifting our vowels, I can say ah here, or I can say ah. That's going to change the sound and the comfort level in my voice. Vowels are a beautiful, incredible tool. I could talk about them all day. So when she sings, no, it becomes an ah. We can continue with the style and make it more of an uh. Go, ah, 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 instead of ah, more of that ah. Right? This is really fun to hear because you can hear it and you can see it in her mouth when you can see a lot of her teeth. That's a sign we're getting a little bit too wide. We do not have to sing everything with like perfect mouth posture. No, okay? Singing is supposed to be fun and singing is supposed to be unique to every person. I am a big believer in that. But it's really interesting to see the difference in her performance from the bottom notes and then when her mouth gets real wide. She still sounds great. Let's listen to that again because I loved that. Okay, Taylor just did the stink face. This is a tool, okay? I want you guys to start watching for the stink face. It's this. <laughs> she did it on her high note. She gets up to that whoa, and she does the stink face. A lot of singers do this unintentionally, which I think is just super cool about the voice. And a lot of singers will throw it in because it's very helpful in bringing our resonance to a more forward place. It helps us mix. In some of my lessons, I will have my students make some pretty silly faces because it helps us feel what that is supposed to feel like in a healthy place. And then we can take that stink face out if we want to, but she does it and it totally works. So I want to know for you guys, if you start paying attention, if you see other singers doing the stink face, I promise you, you're going to find it. She pulled up like a figment of my worst intentions. She said, James, get in, let's drive those. So that's a little breathy, but in a really beautiful way. That's how we can tell that it is, again, a style choice. We've heard what she can do in the bottom of her voice. She's doing this on purpose and she's not doing it too loud either because breath, breathy sound or, you know, adding that into your sound. If you push more, it can turn into rasp and she's not doing that. And it, I really like it. Feels laid back. She's just alone on a stage with her guitar. Totally perfect. I think I did react to this performance. I've reacted to so many people, sometimes I forget. She sounds great here. She sounds very comfortable.
Okay, we've got some vowels we're going to talk about. Well, and then and. Eh and ah, both open vowels, okay? But if we know we're going up to and you, we're going all the way up there on an ah vowel, I want to give myself the best chance at singing that successfully and feeling very stable up there. So the well is getting really wide. Well, you can see like the front of her teeth again. It's a very square mouth shape. And I, if I was Taylor Swift's vocal coach, hi Taylor, I would want that to be a little bit more of an I vowel. Slightly, not so much that the audience, anyone who's listening can tell. We don't want you to say will, but we're going to narrow a little bit that vowel. And then on and, we're gonna make that an eh. So all too well and you end instead of and. And she is adding an H, so it's hand you. And that is not intentional. That is when we add the a, ah, the glottal, right? That's where our vocal cords immediately come together. And, um, I, a lot of words that start with vowels, right? She's adding the H because she, with that glottal, probably causes her to crack. So that's what she's doing there. Again, it's very good. It's very good. And at this part in this song, it's very emotional. So I'm all about Taylor Swift as a storyteller. I think that is like one of the things that she does best. She constantly makes music history. She's such an incredible songwriter. Okay, I'm obsessed. Right there, just because I want us to notice it, is a little bit of a coping skill. We're saying hand instead of and. I think that we could totally mush those words together if she wanted to kind of take that placement with her. So, well and you. So it's well and you, like with that L, but she gives that H, which makes it less stable because that's an aspirate. So we have with that air coming through on that H. Okay, here we are, 2022. She is 33. She sounds great. Okay, 2023, Era's tour. Here we go. That is so good, guys, that is so good. So she's going up there, she's mixing beautifully, and then she adds a little bit of a cry, and that gives her more of a belty sound. Complete style choice, it's amazing. Mixing. And then she goes down, she adds that cry, which helps her belt that note. A cry is a tool that we can use when we have moments like that, where I am mixing, it feels good, or maybe I'm even in my head voice up there, but that next note is right on our passage and we don't want to crack and we don't want to make that too light. We want it to be powerful. She added that cry, so good. Sorry, let's listen to it one more time. <laughs> and then she goes back to mixing. God. God. I just think she's an incredible artist and I do think that she has made music history in one million different ways and how versatile she is through different genres, her songwriting. I think Taylor looks at the world, like she processes the world and her experience through song lyrics. She's amazing. And I knew that. I knew she was an incredible songwriter, but I'm going to be real. I did not know how much of an incredible vocalist she was until I saw the Eras movie. Her low notes, which I already talked about, were amazing and grounded and rich and just like delicious and her high notes she would just pull out and we're so healthy and when a high note is healthy I like to say that it's sparkly right it gives us goosebumps it has resonance and that's what we're going for she just does it so well and in addition I just think the era's tour is groundbreaking and so impressive it's long as hell definitely showing off like her vocal athleticism the costumes the design everything and it seems very thoughtful like she had a hand in every single decision and you can tell that this is just like a celebration of who she is it's so cool so the answer that we i guess have been waiting on do you guys know what i'm gonna say is taylor swift a good live performer yeah <laughs> 
Yeah, okay, she is. I can't imagine what it's like to be on a stage in front of like 200,000 people. Literally could not even fathom what that is like or like on the Grammys or on the, you know, the Today Show, whatever, like where you know that tons and tons and tons of people are watching you. I have had some existential crises before because of... (laughs) videos that have done really well but I'm just by myself I'm just in front of my camera right she's on stage in front of hundreds of thousands of people those moments in her career where she ha- her voice has been a little shaky because she's been nervous and the adrenaline is pumping through your veins she has handled that better than I ever would I went to an audition for a community theater production once and I was so nervous I cracked on the high note because my voice was doing this okay she's amazing she's an incredible live performer and her evolution as not only a performer but as a singer is so clear I wish that we knew more about what goes on behind the scenes when it comes to her voice like I want to know is she like steaming does she have a vocal nebulizer what does her warm-up routine look like for the show does she have a voice teacher I want to know it all I want to know it all I wish that I could just talk to her about her voice (laughs) because I'm just so fascinated. I mean, here I am. I'm a born again Swifty. I'm here. I'm still learning. So y'all, any comments, please leave them below. I want to hear from you. Any Taylor Swift album songs that you want me to react to, I would genuinely love doing that. So drop them in the comments. And if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. It really, really helps me out. And you can think about, you know, consider if you want uh, joining my Patreon. I post extra reaction videos over there. So it's a good time if you want to support me. Okay. Bye, guys.